Welcome to Anything Cricket. Let's talk. Well, we've got uh, some good action for you in this episode. We're going to be talking to Haley Matthews. But uh, even before that, um, we're going to be having a look at the Emma's over 50 T20 competition. Yes, uh, the local cricket scene uh, does have some action and uh, virtually leading the way um, in recent weeks uh, following the restrictions. Uh, the Amas, pretty much as they did coming out of the very first lockdown. Anthony Morris, of course, um, a guy who I have the greatest respect for as a cricket administrator, as a cricket organizer. And uh, I know Wayne Holder loves to disagree with me on, on many points, and that makes a good discussion. But somehow I believe, Wayne Holder, um, that you will agree that Anthony Morris has done some excellent work in organizing cricket competitions. Well, guy, hi, Philip, and hi to all the, the viewers. I don't get any particular pleasure in disagreeing with you. I just try to educate you and get you to come uh, to bring you around my, my way. So don't think that I get any any pleasure whatsoever out of it. Okay, 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 okay. So what I took to, to be that, to be, you know, enjoying, uh, let's say, contradicting, so to speak. Uh, what I will say in this occasion then is that you don't need to educate me where that is concerned. <laughs> I've already passed that test and I recognize the strengths of this young man called Anthony. Well, very much so. I, I am in wholesome agreement with you uh, regarding Anthony Morris and the, the tremendous work that he has been doing. Um, it is a niche area in cricket which he has chosen uh, to pursue. And he has been very, very successful uh, in, his, in his exploits so far. And one can only imagine him and the tournament, this particular tournament, and anything else that he may put his hand on, just getting better and better. You know, uh, what I noticed about the Amas T20, not only this season, but in the previous season, I think this is the second year of this particular competition, but he's been organizing um, other, other competitions and tours and so on uh, before, before COVID. In fact, this tournament was meant to include teams from overseas as well, but then just as it was about to be launched, um, there was COVID coming and, you know, causing that uh, upset as it has done with many other things. Um, but to get back to the, the point I was making, one of the things I noticed about this competition is the keenness of the participants. Now, these guys are all over 50 and, you know, they, they, they enjoy the game. I was going to say, I almost said as much as, as some of the youngsters, but I think when sometimes they get the impression they enjoy it even more. Well, uh, some of them, first of all, a number of them don't appear. You were to judge them on their appearance and, and the, the way they go about the, around the field. You would not believe that they are over 50, uh, quite quite a few of them. And um, it is, well, I myself, um, I'm familiar with a number of these players. And uh, one thing that I do have uh, for them is the admiration uh, for them still being able to motivate themselves and pick themselves up to go out there and play cricket um, weekend after weekend uh, in, in a couple of cases uh, back to back days uh, i saw over the last weekend teams playing um, both saturday and sunday i think we're going to have a similar situation th this coming weekend and uh, yes i think, it, I, think guys, it's, I think it's friday and saturday this weekend unless they change it well no there's friday then friday, there's saturday, sa saturday and then friday, monday saturday. Then there's a break on Sunday, and then the, the, the final comes yeah. off. On Sunday. Mm. So yes, um, very very keen uh, competition, and and one notices um, the organizers were able to get this competition up and running immediately as the the restrictions were lifted. It says almost they were just there in waiting. Everything seemed to have been in place, including the players. You know, everybody seemed to have been in place, ready and waiting, and immediately they were out of the block. So that says something about the enthusiasm for the competition. Well, yeah, to continue the athletics analogy, they were in set mode. So as soon as the gun <laughs> fired, that was it. You just go. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so you've been nice. around watching. You've seen maybe a little bit more than I have um, in the competition so far this year. What are your impressions of what you've seen? Well, it continues to, to, to generate quite a lot of interest. The, the quality of the play for, uh, it has been of a surprisingly high standard. And I say surprisingly because of the age, but not because of the abilities that I know of. A number of these players, I mean, these are men, uh, so, some of them, we, we talk about over 50s, but there are a number of players who, who, who even surpass uh, the, the 60 year range and a number of over 60s are also involved in the competition and um, a number of whom I will be much more familiar with from a playing aspect, you know, and um, I have been very impressed up to, up to this stage with what I've seen. Well, actually, you mentioned that you would have played cricket with some of these guys and that was my biggest disappointment last weekend when I, when I attended. Um, we unholded the, the, the very tidy little keeper from, from YMPC. Um, was actually behind the microphone alongside me, um, rather than out in the middle. And anything tidy with me and we can keep in the God be my clothes, you know. <laughs> I, I, Philip, um, if we may make a public announcement here, have retired from playing cricket. <laughs> Sometime now. <laughs> Sometime uh, now. For those, for those who, who, who weren't previously informed. Okay, um, fair enough. I have retired from playing any form of cricket. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Well, um, for those who may not be aware, in fact, the last one of the, the, the matches in the rounds last weekend was actually streamed live um, through this um, forum. And um, we will be looking to do that again for the final, which is scheduled for Easter Monday, two o'clock at the Barbados National Oil Company grounds at Woodburn, St. Philip. Two o'clock on Saturday, Veterans is going to be one of the teams in the final. The other team will be determined based on the outcome of the matches to be played on Friday and Saturday. And Wayne, I know you know a lot more about those matches than I do. Well, the competition has come down to be fairly keenly contested, although, as you mentioned, the veterans uh, have distanced themselves uh, from the pack, more or less. They have remained unbeaten up to, to, to this stage. Um, the, well, the teams divided, but well, not divided. There are four teams in the competition um, who play each other twice in a round robin format, and uh, which means that each team plays six matches. And up to this point, the veterans have won the five matches that they have played. So, as I said, they they automatically qualified uh, for the final. A tussle going on among the the other group. The other group made of travelers. Limers and legends, and I, I think uh, as it stands right now, the Limers are in second position, followed by uh, the legends and uh, the travelers who are all on a uh, one win apiece. Limers on two wins, eight points, and this weekend's action will determine who it, who would get the opportunity to upset the so far. Um, unstoppable uh, veterans side. Well, let, me, let me share some of the players with this veteran side for our viewers. Um, uh, it's being led by Brian Johnson. And um, mm -hmm. also I think um, isn't uh, young Anthony Morris in there as well. Yes, and Anthony Morris is there. In fact, he captained at least one of the games in the absence of, of the standing captain, Brian Johnson. Uh, Pedro Eggard, who we know uh, quite well, not only from his playing days, but from um, being involved in, in a similar type of uh, activity that we were involved in as well, that is sports media, uh, Pedro Aguiard. Uh, there's Hayden Archer, Raymond August, Rick, Rick, Raymond Ogis, it is? Ron Bates. I guess they pronounced Ogis. Yeah. Ogis, they yes, Ogis. Ogis. Um, Ron Bates, Peter Clark, Ricky Clark, Ian Drakes, Vibert Green, Michael Griffith, Vincent Haynes, Dayton Jackman, Emerson Jordan, Jeffrey Lafon, Gordon Maxwell, Mark Seeley, Winston Warren, and I already told you Anthony Morris. So that's the, the veterans. Uh, those are some of the players, or the, that's the squad really that makes up the veterans. You said the Limers are in second position, Win? Yes, the Limers with two wins at this stage, yes. I think their they captain is Keith Seal. Is that correct? Keith Seal is the captain of that side. Yes. He's got Michael Agard with him, Ricardo Ali. Um, Michael Agard, um, who is of the Crossfire fame. Yes, Crossfire fame. More popularly known, but, but those who know him would know that he was a fairly, um, a fairly decent Tidy. cricketer playing, <laughs> playing for Pickwick. I think he kept the, wicked as well. 
And a, a very good keeper. Very, yes, very good. Yes. And I think I saw him opening the batting back then too. And for those who may be aware of a youngster called Michael Agar Jr., well, this is why he's junior, because of Michael Agar, the senior. And Michael Agar Jr., um, just before COVID, was doing quite well on the local scene, the local um, scene. And, and actually pushing for players at, at a higher level. He was doing quite well. Well, yes, with his off spin in particular, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, uh, very handy with the bat playing for the Gladiola side in the Premier uh, uh, Premier Division. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was having a good season in, in uh, 2019 and I think in 2020 also. Can he went, yeah, go ahead. No, I just said 2020 when it was exclusively T20. Yeah, yeah, right. So then you have uh, Kanis uh, Ogis, Andy Blackman, David Carrington, Carlton Cullimore, David Eswick, Gregory Gaskin, Jefferson Gibbons, Winston Gittins, Edward Ince, David Ennis, Jerry Curtin, Ken Mears, Victor Patrick, Gilbert Rock, Derwin Thompson. Uh, I'm sure that our viewers uh, and listeners will reckon, recognize many of those names. Well, a number of those names are household names at the local domestic level, whatever um, the, the, the division. Now we've got persons who would have represented from the, well, it's now the premier division, uh, the elite division, which previously used to be uh, first division, mm -hmm. right down, down through to the, 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 the junior levels. We've got some players there who would have featured for some of the more successful teams at the junior domestic level. So yes, um, um, I believe you did mention Viper Green. I mean, mm -hmm. that was a person who would have played for the Barbados oh, team. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think they would also represented the West Indies B uh, at some stage of, of his career. So he would be one of the uh, more prominent names coming up so I'm far. I'm talking about prominent names. There's a team called the Legends, um, being led by Michael Matthews, who actually um, was on the show quite recently. And of course, we all know his daughter, Haley Matthews, who um, we'll hear from later in, in the show. And um, yes, so he is leading the Legends team. Oh, yeah. Michael Matthews is one of the better uh, local players never to represent uh, 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 Barbados at the senior, oh, yeah. senior national level. I think he, he, he would have uh, represented the, the island at the junior national level. Okay. But unfortunately. So were, he at, were he at the peak of his game now, you would probably be in the West Indies team, given the quality of batsmanship that we saw from him during his heyday. Well, I, I, I support that. Another another area that we agree in. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got Sherlyn Babbitton, Patrick Barrow, Elvis Carter, Carl Chapman. And I, I really was impressed with the half century saw from Carl Chapman last weekend. He's a lot bigger than when we knew him. He was never a small guy. Yet, I never knew him to be small. But he's, he's certainly a lot bigger now. But again, showing that cricket is primarily a game of, of skill, of cricket skill. And even although he does pretty much everything slower, he's still very effective. I say, you know, we say it is like riding a bicycle. No? Mm. Uh, you don't ever forget how to ride a bicycle. You may not be able to do the same tricks and stunts. <laughs> but you'll get from point A to point B. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, you won't fall off because of a lack of balance. Yes, so he certainly, in fact, that, that additional size has pro it probably made him any more powerful because there was a six that he launched. Um, did they find the ball? I'm not even sure if they were able to find the ball. I'm not so sure Carl Chapman can get any more powerful. He was always a powerful player. Okay, you know, that, that was one of his uh, quote-unquote strengths. <laughs> <laughs> You're informed tonight then. So you've got Craig Cozier, um, George Riffer, uh, David Grant, Owen Gibson, Len Gill, George Harris, Thomas Harris, William Lashley, he too. Um, the son, of course, the former Barbados and West player, Peter Lashley. And William Lashley, um, he, he looked quite good as well. He would probably be among the younger over 50s, I would think. Seemed like just the other day he was playing um, local cricket at the, you know, the, the regular uh, club level. Then there's David Pitt, Ansari Mohadri, Norman Puckrain, Frank Skeet, and Gregory Small. That's the Legends lineup. Yeah, yes, yeah, so and uh, William Lashley, um, I'm told, would have represented a West Indies Masters team. Uh, oh, yes, quite recently. In, in recent times in a, in a, in a international masters competition. Um, I think the West Indies went to the finals in that competition last year, I think maybe the only uh, locally based uh, West Barbadian player uh, mm -hmm. to have represented that side. So he, he, would have, he would be coming into the competition with some form yep. and uh, played some cricket during the, 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 the era of the pandemic. And the other team um, in the competition, you did say there were four, Travelers uh, being Travelers. led by Oren Birch, a former 
Um, well, I, I want to say the former Wonders player, but I think he would have played for a couple of other clubs at some at some stage. Played for for the BET that that BET lineup at some point. Mm -hmm. He would have played for. He would also have represented the Barbados Cricket League mm -hmm. uh, in, in earlier times when they uh, were still represented in, in BCA competitions and a very active cricketer up to now. You know, okay. uh, he plays in the Barbados Cricket League uh, for his side there at. Welshman, not Welshman, or Welches. Welches, uh, okay. Yeah, plays in, in, in St. Thomas. So, and Burke's very, very active cricketer and hasn't lost a thing over the years, still has that passion uh, for, for the game and love for batting. You know, some players, when they hear of Masters cricket, they are thinking of players who uh, come out once a year, dust off, they, they, they get removed the dust and, and, and whatever from their gear and, and go there in the middle. And that may very well be the case for some. But there are others who love the game so much, they've never given it up. And at 50 plus, they're still playing competitively every Saturday with the youngsters and doing well. Well, the majority of the players in this competition are very, very active uh, at domestic at domestic level. I, I happen to know um, the, the junior domestic levels. Um, there are a couple of players who play uh, who, who still strut their stuff in the Barbados Cricket League mm -hmm. competition. So, uh, as, so that 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 has been a, a diminishing factor in the local cricket landscape. But a number, for instance, Carol Chapman, I know, uh, still plays very much for Shannon. Okay. Um, so we've got a number of players who continue to represent at the junior level uh, as far as competition is concerned. So Oren Birch, um, uh, I didn't give you his teammates, Neville Ali, Paul Bridgman, um, Wilbur Bruce, Bart Callender, these are some big names here, Sherman Ellis, Ian Freeman. Not only big names, some big men too. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Giddens, Cleveland Grant, Richard Green, Robert Headley. Our good friend yeah. Robert Headley, Patrick Holder, Leon Lane, Donovan Lovell, um, Redford Prescott, Shem Springer, Wesley Stricker, and Anthony Stewart. Um, there's a name I didn't see here, didn't call, but I saw him at the game last weekend, Jeremy Allen. Um, I think he is part of um, one of the teams as well. Yeah, but Jeremy, I, I believe, is now um, operating at the level of management. Oh, okay, you know I mean? okay. That off the field. Okay. From what okay. Is told, from what okay. Is told, I did what see him leaving as I um, the first game as I was arriving for the second game that we were streaming, um, but yeah. at that point in time we were quite busy setting up and so on and we didn't get to to, to, to chat. Um, so yes, yeah, so he's still good to see that even although he is not playing, that he's still showing that interest and that love. And I think that's one of the things that distinguishes um, the, the cricketers of I don't want to say yes to year again, but. The cricketers that say of a certain era, <laughs> the, the love for the game. Uh, so it was not love. a question of that you're playing uh, to see how much money you can earn. Not that they would turn down any money that they offered, but it was not just about money. It was not just about representing Barbados or West Indies. It was about playing for the love of the game. And that love for the game actually brought about a commitment and a, a way of doing things that actually helped them to be very successful when they did get the opportunity to perform at the highest level. Well, the difference between the player of the past and today's player is that the player of the past was prepared to sacrifice. They would take their own money and buy their gear, pay their subs, you know, uh, uh, make it part and parcel of the, the, their overall expense to be to be uh, to outfit themselves and equip themselves to play the game. Today's players, uh, I don't hold it against them either, but they are in it for what they can get out of it. Mm -hmm. more so than what they're able to put in. I mean, but the opportunities are there, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and like, like you, I'm not saying it to be critical of today's player. Absolutely. I'm simply not, outlining not something that I've observed. Yeah. Yes, it is a fact. I mean, only uh, recently I was uh, I, I was privileged to watch. Um, the, but right now we have some local junior uh, age level trials going on. You know, mm -hmm. and the approach and the attitude uh, tells me that, you know, that, that today's players, um, like you said, they, they don't, they're not willing, I, I, I would go as far as to say, to make all the sacrifices that the players of the past uh, were prepared to do. They, 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 they love the game. They, they, they want to make a success of it. They, they try to do their best under whatever circumstances they may have to perform. But that, that attitudinal change, difference, uh, it, it, it's quite remarkable. You, 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 can't, you, you, know, you, you can't not see it. Well, and I guess the results uh, are there also for all to see at the 
highest level. Well, then um, all that's left is to invite our viewers to um, join us uh, for the stream, the live stream on Monday. Of course, you'll find the link on the Anything Cricket uh, page, uh, YouTube channel, Anything Cricket uh, channel, Let's Talk channel. And we invite you to, to um, subscribe to the channel as well. You know, it's very easy to find. And when you, when you do find it, subscribe to it. You can do that before, you can do it during the course of the game. And we'll most likely, uh, most likely we'll also have it on the Facebook platform as well, which uh, tends to be our primary platform for our talk shows of this nature. But this is going to be a live event, uh, streaming the final of the Amas T20 on Monday. And that's uh, due to start. The final, the final start. Two o'clock. Yes, but before that, uh, Philip, let's just remind of the uh, the competition as it like, the, the wrong robin um, side of things as it as it concludes over the weekend and um, come Good Friday, uh, the April the fifteenth at ten a.m. Travelers will be taking on veterans. Travelers needing a, a win to, to maintain um, a, a chance of making it through to the final, let, let, right? Let's work out that the first two teams actually after the round robin go into the final. So travelers needing to win, and which would mean upsetting the veterans. So that should be a very interesting affair. Then at two o'clock, the Limers uh, for whom a win could secure uh, 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 that, that, that final that finals birth they come up against the legends who, who are also in the hunt but of course are in a must win situation and then come saturday uh, also the final around robin match will be between travelers and limers so limers are having a double header back to back um, matches this weekend they play against the travelers and depending on the outcome of the Friday's matches, this could be a rather interesting affair, or it could be a dead rubber. Um, one would only know after uh, after Saturday. But before all of this, on after Saturday, Friday, I think you mean after Friday, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, before all of this, there is a game. I think it's, this game involves much younger players, much on the other end uh, of the scale as as far as age. Is concerned. So I, I would probably, I would probably qualify for that game. Then you don't have to answer that. Well, I'd rather not. I, <laughs> <laughs> but you have a mass eleven uh, taking on an invitational eleven. Uh, I didn't get the, the the actual details, but I from speaking uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Morris over the last weekend, I got the impression that this is involving a, a much young. This is more towards the the youth side of things, the juvenile side side of things, uh, in in a, in an exhibition at 10 a.m. in the morning. So you can come early and see that. But then on then at two o'clock, that final round robin match, which could very well be the, a decisive fixture. Travelers versus the Limers. And you've already spoken. We look forward to having all our viewers and followers uh, join us uh, for that streaming e event. And of course, the commentary compliments the Anything Cricket Let's Talk team, Philip Hackett, Wayne Holder, and other invited guests. Well, thanks very much, Wayne. When we come back, you're going to hear from Haley Matthews. Well, first of all, Haley, let me say congratulations on making the team of the tournament following your participation in the um, ICC Women's World Cup. Thank you. I think going down to the tournament, I wanted to do really well. So to be able to go down and execute and help the team with key performances has been very pleasing for me. Overall, though, um, what is, what's your feeling about the performance of the team? I mean, they're very views as, as, as always. Um, given, you know, you were there, you experienced it, you know all the challenges. How do you assess the performance of the team? Well, I think going down there, we probably were hoping to, uh, well, as any team would, hoping to take home the trophy. But I think looking back at some of the performances we put down, we probably exceeded a lot of expectations against certain teams. I think beating a side like New Zealand and then coming and beating a side like England as well has been quite a milestone for us. It was great to be a part of over there in New Zealand. Um, 
And yeah, I know we, we filled the hearts of West Indians with a lot of joy when we did that. I think looking back on it now, we probably were a bit inconsistent throughout the tournament. Obviously losing to Pakistan was not something we had in mind. And yeah, I think even taking the game against Bangladesh with it being so close, uh, where two performances we really look back on and say we would have wanted to perform better. But at the same time that we went down there, we got to the semifinals. We played every one of our matches with a lot of fight and heart. Every single game that we ended up winning, uh, we had to fight right to the very end, uh, which was very heartening to see and very heartening to be a part of as well. You, you talked about Pakistan and Bangladesh, um, and, and you really would have wanted them better. Is there a possibility that maybe you under, underestimated them somewhat, Pakistan and Bangladesh? I don't think underestimate is the right word to use. I think probably going, looking back at the Bangladesh game, um, I think looking back on, on Bangladesh on a whole in the tournament, they bowled really, really well. Um, and it, it just shows that they have a quality bowling attack. And we probably just didn't play and execute them as well as we want, against them as well as we wanted to. Um, and, and that was probably the cause for that really small total. However, we went out there and did an excellent job defending that 140 that we put on the board, which is something uh, you don't see very often in ODI cricket defending such a low score. And then I think going in against, up against Pakistan with the rain falling the entire day, I'm not expecting to play any cricket at all. Um, and then it getting reduced to a 20 over game, obviously you have to change up kind of fast and adapt really quickly. And we probably didn't do that as best as we could. I, I do think at the same time they had the better end of the wicket. Um, it was a lot slower and damper, uh, turning a lot bigger in the first half. And then it dried out a bit throughout that second half. So I wouldn't say it's any underestimation. Um, just a lot of varying factors that kind of came into place within those two games. And you, you made the point that you fought uh, against um, you know, all the teams. But uh, there were those who, who felt that maybe in the final especially, you didn't go into the final ready for the final. And uh, the, the, well, the fact that you lost was not a devastating thing for, for fans. Uh, there are those who felt that you maybe should have put up a better fight. What is, what's your own view on that? It's cricket at the end of the day. Um, of course, we went into the semifinals, um, full guns blazing, trying to beat a team like Australia. Uh, we had every belief that we could. I think the game we played them in the group stages, making 130-something and then the way we fought in the field, um, taking those couple early wickets, having them seven for two, um, that instilled belief that we could have beaten them in the semifinals. But I think when you look back at it, they obviously have a lot of class players. And when a team like Australia gets off to a start like that, especially with us putting down chances, it is very hard to reel them in. Um, chasing a score like 300 in 45 overs is not something easy at all. Um, that's a mammoth total to chase down in 45 overs. And yeah, I just think um, our, our top batters probably had to bat the entire innings and not only just bat, but at a high run rate as well. And yeah, look, kudos to them. They bowled really well too. And yeah, just kind of put us out the game pretty early. So tell me something. Um, we're going to get back to the Australians and their strength, but do you think that the, the length of the tournament, I mean, you, you had to play all the teams, and that's, that's good from a cricketing perspective. But given the COVID protocols and the, the, the challenges of playing cricket in, the, in this era, uh, this COVID era, if you will, um, do you think that the length of the tournament, given all the protocols that you had to go through, would have been a factor in, in, in maybe um, challenging the team to, to finish strong, to have a very strong finish? I, I guess over time, um, you can get a bit mentally exhausted. Obviously, we were in South Africa first um, for a little while. And, you know, spending three months on tour is never easy. Um, but at the same time, look, I think South Africa was really good preparation for us. Coming into the tournament, we got in some really good match practice. And then, yeah, heading over to the World Cup is, is kind of what we expected. Um, I think those those kind of tournaments are exactly what we need um, to play a lengthy amount of cricket, have an opportunity to play against every team to give ourselves the best possible opportunity of uh, getting as deep in the tournament as we can. And yeah, like, like like you were saying, it is hard in this environment with COVID around, but things in New, New Zealand were actually quite relaxed when it came to um, having freedom to probably go to and get dinner and stuff like that, which is something we didn't have before. So I, I wouldn't put it down to um, any COVID restrictions making us mentally tired. I just think playing cricket for that length of period is obviously hard, but 
look, as a professional athlete, those are things that you have to do in order to be the best um, around the world. And yeah, it just shows that, that that's what teams like Australia have been really accustomed to. Um, they played in the Ashes right before and they were able to compete really well throughout the entire tournament, winning every game too. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you think though, given all the challenges and so on, you did you did get some some tours and, and some practice games, if you will. Um, the qualifiers, uh, you, you had some issues there. Do you think the preparation was was adequate? I do believe the preparation was adequate. It obviously, wasn't ideal what happened when we went over to Bangladesh for the World Cup qualifiers. We were really hoping to get in some good match practice there, um, and even go home winning winning the qualifiers and getting some confidence under our belt. But at the same time, even though we didn't get that off, we were able to play Pakistan right before that as well, over in Pakistan. Uh, we were able to play South Africa right before the World Cup, which are two teams that are quite challenging. Um, Pakistan, we were able to do really, really well against. And then we saw a massive improvement against South Africa versus how we played in the Caribbean in 2021. So I think Things were going well right before the World Cup. And yeah, I would honestly say we started peaking at the right time. Okay. Now, you, in 2016, you were part of that um, <clears throat> championship winning team, probably one of the highest moments in, in, in West Indies cricket. And um, you, you were part of that and, and a big part of it too. Um, since then, not the type of, of, of result you would have wanted. Um, credit to the team for making it to the semifinals against the odds here because you didn't come in ranked number seven. Where do you see West Indies cricket going, West Indies women's cricket going, let's say, in another five years or even beyond that? I honestly think um, we, we need to keep moving forward. Um, I think looking back on it now, uh, before we won the 2016 World Cup, I think there was a stat going up where we were the team that played the most amount of international cricket over the three or four year span before that. Mm -hmm. And... Like I just think over since 2020, we've probably been the team playing the most cricket once again um, leading up to this World Cup. And it just really shows that when we are playing a lot of cricket and we are really getting that match practicing, um, that we do put out good performances because the girls are continuously improving. Um, I think what's going to be really key for, for West Indies women's cricket in the next five years is going to be our domestic structure and uh, what 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 kind of talent we can get coming through the program over the next couple of years. Obviously, with our team now, we have quite a few girls um, over 30 years old. And, you know, it would just be really good if we can get a really strong domestic structure sorted out. Um, kudos to Cricket West Indies now implementing uh, a form of the CPL this summer. And, yeah, hopefully we can get more things like that going in order to get some more players coming through the development system of, of uh, cricket in the West Indies. You talk about more players, and I can, I can tell you that that's been a lot of talk, too, where people are saying we need to see more women playing and so on. But, you know, over 30 years experience in, in local schools, um, I know the challenges that exist in terms of programs outside of the normal academic programs being introduced. Everybody wants to have a piece of the pie. And it's not as straightforward as some people think. But you started playing cricket. You, you played cricket at school. So you may have some insight in what one may need to do to get girls in primary school, especially maybe even in secondary school, interested in playing cricket. Yeah, I was fortunate enough uh, to have the interest of cricket from home. Um, through my dad and my brother, they both played. And uh, I think that's how I got into cricket. Um, but at the same time, it's not going to be like that for everyone else as well. So I definitely do think the schools need to push probably more of an agenda trying to get uh, ladies into the game. Um, even if not the school, it probably needs to come from cricket associations and within the islands to try and get that going. Because I think for me, the best thing that probably happened for my cricket was me coming through those grassroots levels, um, playing with boys. Obviously, playing with them at that age helps you to improve a lot more and a lot quicker. So, yeah, I would definitely like to see a lot more girls being involved in schools cricket because I think that's that's what it's really about. And if, if you can start cricket at a really early age as a female, um, there's no reason why you can't move on to play international cricket. There's so many opportunities now growing in the women's game that if you genuinely love the game from an early age, you can, you can be a professional in it. But what would be some of the things that may intimidate, the, you know, these young girls? They're talking primary school, early secondary school. Uh, you know, you, you, you've been among them. You probably still have friends who you went to school with, who you interact with, 
and who maybe look up to you because of your accomplishments. And uh, you know, I'm trying to get some insight from you. You've been there, you've been among them. So what are the things that would stop young girls from, from wanting to take part? Honestly, I never had massive challenges taking part uh, within the, the boys' sport. Um, well, the boys' program at school uh, going through cricket over the years. Um, I guess different schools, you may face different challenges. Um, but I, I would hope in a year like 2022 and moving forward that every school is adaptable to the fact that women can be playing the game and women should be playing the game, even amongst the boys. Um, and yeah, I, I would definitely hope that the coaches and, you know, everyone within the environment are, are encouraging girls to be amongst the boys' teams once they're good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if you can move forward, you've got the, the World Cup behind you. I know you've got uh, some other projects coming up and we're going to touch on those, but let me jump forward to um, something of national interest, if you will, the Commonwealth Games. And, um, you know, you are the captain of the team and I, I know you would want to do well. Uh, so what are your thoughts as we get into that phase, really? I almost said preparation phase, but I guess we should be there ready. As we get into that phase just before the Commonwealth Games, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting for these, this Barbados team to be a part of that tournament. I think it's going to do so much for the growth and the development of so many of the players. I think after you look past probably the seven or eight of us that have international experience, um, we've got a lot of young girls now who are going to get the opportunity to go and experience what it's like playing against the best of the best, um, playing against teams like India, Australia, um, England. And yeah, that's going to be a massive opportunity for them to have a look at what it definitely takes to become a professional in these sports and hopefully encourage them to want to do it even more. Fortunately or unfortunately, um, I've heard so often this comment by fans, and I don't know the extent to which it is known within the playing community, um, of the big three, and that's with reference to the West Indies team. And of course, they're talking about Haley Matthews, Stephanie Taylor, and DeAndre Dottin. Um, those of us who follow the game close enough do recognize that there are other players who make contributions, but there's no denying the significant difference between those three and, and, and the others. How much pressure does that put on you, not only at the West Indies level, but now with the Barbados level, you may be hearing about the big two? Well, I think if, if we really sit down and look at things, um, over the last two years, we've seen massive improvements throughout the rest of the team, which has been really, really good to be a part of. Uh, we saw Shadeen Nation. We saw a wonderful World Cup from Shemaine Campbell. Um, she was contributing behind the stumps um, in the back. When, when she, her and Nation came in against England and we lost three wickets within one over, once upon a time, many would have felt as though we would have crumbled then and there and probably been skittled out for 130 runs. Um, and they were able to take the game and put um, a 230-run total on the board that we were able to defend against England. So, I mean, like you said yourself, I think it's a case where if you do follow the game closely, you would realize that it's not the same anymore. Um, and like I said, again, kudos to uh, us playing a lot of cricket. I think that's what really helps the girls continuously improve more and more. And, yeah, I think if we can continue to play lots of cricket throughout the years, we'll continue seeing contributions all over the board. Um, I think then looking at Barbados is the same thing. We haven't had domestic cricket now for quite a while. Um, but at the same time, we do have players, Kaisi Knight, Kaishona Knight, uh, Shamelia Connell, Shakira Selma, who are all experienced campaigners and have been fantastic for, for Barbados throughout the years. And yeah, I have no doubt that when we go to the Commonwealth Games, it, it will be the same. So yeah, I think looking at it now, um, obviously myself, Deandra, uh, we know that sometimes we can be core, the core of the batting, but at the same time, we have players around us in the Barbados team who are always there to contribute. And yeah, I, I can never speak to the fact that for Barbados, me and DeAndre are a big two necessarily because we have people that have made 50s, we have people that have made 100s, we have people that take most wickets in the tournament when the year comes. So we have mm -hmm. outstanding performers every every year. Okay. Now, you made a reference quite on the sand beta Australia a, a couple of times during this, this chat um, and, and the strength of the Australian side. You recognize the need to play cricket and that when we play a lot of cricket, we do better. But what else do you think needs to be done to, to get West Indies uh, women's cricket on the pathway 
to having a, a site like Australia. I mean, Australia, <laughs> it, it, they, they virtually tick all the boxes and they have great depth. Um, apart from playing, which of course is important, are there any other secrets that you picked up that we need to focus on? Yeah, like I think there's been a story over the last couple of months now with the Australian team and after their loss in the World Cup in 2017 against England, I'm sorry, against India in the semifinals, um, they kind of put a five-year plan in place where they knew that they had to do certain things in order to get back to a level to be winning World Cups and becoming the best team in the game. And I think their board really made an investment within the women's game at that time uh, in, order to, in order to put things in place for them to do that, strengthening their domestic structure, um, you know, making, making I, I believe they have over 100 professional cricketers throughout, throughout Australia, which is obviously something that's going to encourage more girls to take the game seriously. And it's definitely a case where we, we need to be doing things like that. Obviously, we don't have a board as, as big and as massive as Cricket Australia um, in terms of funds and everything like that. But at the same time, I, I, I do believe, uh, you know, investments need to be made in the women's game domestically in order for us, us to improve. And yeah, that's why I continue to say, you know, kudos to CPL for that. CPL that they're looking to bring forward for us. Um, you know, hopefully we can see our, our, our regional cricket taking back off this year as it's supposed to, uh, not playing for the last couple of years. And, you know, just stuff like that to continuously keep us improving, not only at a West Indies level, but below as well. And uh, Haley, I really... Um wouldn't want to necessarily avoid, although this may put you under a bit of pressure, but there's been some talk about the leadership at the West Indies level. Um, and I think the fact that you're the Barbados captain shows the confidence that has been putting you. But there's been some talk maybe uh, about time maybe for change in leadership. Of course, Stefani Taylor, one of the greats of West Indies cricket, has done a, a, a lovely job as a player, um, has had some success as a captain. Um, but how do you feel about the, the, the talk about maybe Haley Matthews as, as a future captain uh, in the not too distant future for West Indies? Well, I, I don't think that that's on my mind necessarily right now. Look, I think looking back at Steph as captain of this team, um, it's evident we just went into a tournament ranked seventh and we came out in the semifinals. Um, that's testament to the way she's led the team. Um, and even though she probably didn't have the best tournament with the bat or the ball herself personally, um, it still takes a whole lot to lead a team to a World Cup semifinals, especially a team um, coming in the tournament as underdogs. So, um, yeah, look, West Indies captain uh, might be something in my future, but it's nothing that I directly have on my mind right now saying that I'm gunning for any position whatsoever. Talking about what's on your mind right now, I understand that you've got some assignments coming up uh, over the next couple of days. Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, so I head to the Fair Break Invitational competition at the beginning of May, it is, um, over in Dubai, um, which is a Hong Kong initiative tournament, invitational tournament. And yeah, then after that, um, you know, I, I believe we might have a regional tournament and some prep for um, Commonwealth Games as well before summer kicks off and I get into the 100 as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, before all that, uh, at this point in time, have you resettled yet? You know, you, you've been on the other side of the world, if you will. Uh, have you reacclimatized yet to, to our hope conditions? Yeah, I think last night was probably the most stable sleeping night. Um, I was able to get a couple hours in, so slowly adjusting. Um, yeah, I, I have been a bit hot over the last couple of days with the 30 degrees every day uh, after coming back from a country like New Zealand where it's been a bit cooler. But yeah, like, I love being home and resetting every time I come back home, seeing friends and family and just enjoying time home. So yeah, it's been, it's been really good to be back and just get some time off to reset before I head out again. And, and how's your project going that we talked about last time we chatted? Oh, it's really good. Yeah, it's, it's in Eagle Hall, good. I think it is. Yeah, Oasis Cafe in Eagle Hall. That's been really good. Um, I've been having some really good reviews about it. And obviously, that's what you want when you're running a business. So, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's been good stuff so far. Haley Matthews, the cricketer, Haley Matthews, the uh, entrepreneur. Thanks very much yeah, for like joining us. You, you like the song of it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So, thanks very much for joining us again on Anything Cricket Let's Talk. Thank you very much for having me.
We'll be back on Anything Cricket. Let's talk. That's our show. Thanks for watching. Join us again soon for another episode of Anything Cricket. Let's talk.